years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hello, everybody. How are you? It's Alex Bennett, and this is The Ramble. Back again uh, for another night of, of uh, hilarity. We'll get to our citizens panel in just a little bit. Why Why is it so warm in here? Let me, uh, let me up my uh, fan here, because I have this remote control that will allow me to do it. Let me see here. Come on. Go up there. Okay. Let's get some cold in here. Okay. Is it, in, uh, is it on uh, cool? Yeah, it's on cool. See? I love, ha I love the remote control is the greatest invention of all time. Okay? Uh, I love the remote control. When I was a kid, I used to have to get up from the couch to go and change the channel on the TV set. Now I don't have to. That was exercise. Uh, and now with the uh, air conditioner, it's all the way over there. I don't have to walk over. I can just zap it, and uh, it'll do what it's got to do. Uh, but I did blow a uh, circuit breaker the other night because what happens is this um, air conditioner has an energy-saving uh, thing on it where it just checks the temperature in the room, and when the temperature changes, it changes its speed and what it's doing and so on. Well, I turned on the air conditioner in the guest room, and when it did that, it cre when it kind of adjusted for the, uh, for the warmth of the room, uh, it uh, either sped up or slowed down or did something, and it caused a power slight power surge, which blew the circuit breaker in the, in the kitchen. But thank God it isn't the circuit breaker in the basement, because the circuit breaker in the basement is hell to get to. So, anyway. But uh, this, this works okay. Uh, uh, but then we have some guests who are coming, and they're going to want to use the air conditioner, and I don't know what we're going to do. It's... Uh, it's a pain in the ass, but I, I don't have this thing on energy save, so we're fine. All right. Uh, anyway, um, um, I uh, what do I want to talk to you about? Uh, I um, I don't have that much to actually relay to you. Um, anyway, um, let me see here. Let me. I, I last night I watched. I started watching. A thing on PBS. I started with the third episode, and then I went to the first two episodes. Now you can do that with this thing, but uh, and it was called um, um, "Chasing the Moon," uh, and uh, it is about the space program that eventually landed a man on the moon. And it's three episodes. It's on PBS. If you have PBS, uh, the PBS app, and you can watch it. Uh, on your uh, Roku or on your I, I uh, what is it uh, uh, t Apple TV? Uh, it's it's three fascinating two-hour episodes. I mean, and just absolutely amazing. Uh, and it it dealt with the whole Moon program, starting with uh, uh, well, starting with Sputnik which was the Russians' uh, satellite, which was the first satellite in orbit. That was the first piece of junk up there, okay? Uh, and then, um, then the Russians kept doing more stuff. They found, finally, they, they put a dog up. I and you know, it's funny. There are things in my life that I forget. You know, I can't remember certain people or birthdays, or I, can't, I, I have to go to the calendar to remember well, when I married my current wife, you know. And I can't remember when I married all the others. Although I do remember Ronnie I married on December the 18th. And I think we did that because it was my mother's birthday. And she and my father came up to see us get married, so we figured we'd do it on the 18th. But anyway, you don't remember things. But for some reason, there are certain things about the space race and about the space programs that I do remember, and I think it was because, let me go back, at a very young age, 
Uh, I uh, wanted to be an astronaut, but there was no such thing as an astronaut. In fact, I don't think that I ever said I wanted to be an astronaut because that term wasn't invented until the space program. Prior to that, I said, uh, I want to grow up and go to the moon. And all the kids gave me a bad time for that. They referred to me as Moon Rocks Bennett, okay? Uh, yeah. And, and, and I always, and I remember, I, I guess I got interested in space. I think what got me interested in space, two, two people, basically. One was a Robert Heinlein, who uh, wrote Stranger in a Strange Land and a lot of other science fiction books. Uh, uh, what was the one where the, uh, I'm trying to remember, the, uh, uh, the parasites attach themselves to human beings and around the neck? and the whole planet is taken over by this species who attach themselves to human beings and become parasites. Uh, I'm trying to remember what the name of it was now, but I can't remember it, so forget it, you know. But he, uh, he, what he also wrote were kids' science fiction books, and they were really great. Uh, and I read them all. I, you know, I couldn't, I, every time a new Heinlein book came out, I read it. And if, when I started reading him, I went back and read everything he ever did. So I read things like uh, Red Planet Mars, uh, Space Trooper, uh, what was it? Uh, Space Troopers, I think, uh, was the name of the book. Um, um, oh, what was, what, there were some of the others. I'm trying to remember the names of some of the others. Um, but I loved uh, his... Uh, Space Cadet was another one he wrote, uh, and these were all kids' books. These were all written for me, okay, and I devoured them. And I devoured also these books by, they were, um, they were, they were, they were books about space, and they were, the text was written by Willie Lay, who was a rocket scientist, if I remember correctly. Uh, not one of the preeminent ones, but a rocket scientist who could explain things very nicely in these texts. But the, the main thing in these books were drawings, uh, illustrations by a great illustrator. And if you get a chance, go online. I'm sure if you type in the name Chesley Bonestell, that's B-O-N-E-S-T-E-L. Uh, Chesley is the first name, C-H-E-S-L-E-Y, okay? Chesley Bonestell. Um, you, you, or it might have been pronounced Bonestell. I used to think it was Bonestell, but I always have gone Bonestell because when I tell, say it to people, they, if they remember it that way, they'll kind of know how to spell it, okay? And he made these rather elaborate paintings of what it would be like if you were on some of these other planets. And he used scientific information of the time to draw what it would be like if you were on the surface of, say, Jupiter, or the surface of Mars, or the surface of Saturn, surface of Uranus, surface of Venus. In fact, you know, I'm, I was so good at space, I could name all the planets in order. You know, Mercury, uh, Venus, the Earth, Mars, Jupiter, uh, then uh, Saturn, then I, and I always get these wrong, I think they're in alphabetical order, Neptune and Uranus. And of course, Pluto was way out at the very end, but poor Pluto is no longer a planet, right? I've always felt bad about that. But anyway, um, um, so these were the kind of things that I, that I surrounded myself with growing up as a kid. Uh, and then there was always the recordings of Orson Welles' uh, uh, War of the Worlds and uh, then there were the, the plethora of science fiction movies that came out, but the first one that I remember that dealt with space travel, there were two of them. One was really scientifically accurate, and the other one was just, you know, blow it out your ass, let's go boo, okay? Um, the one that blew it out your ass and went boo was a, a picture called Rocket Ship XM. Uh, and it was in black and white until you got to Mars, and then it was red, okay? They tinted the film, uh, and uh, it, they went to Mars, and then there were monsters on Mars, and they were, had, had to run away from them, and they, they tried to get home, but they couldn't get home, and they finally, the rocket ship XM crashed to Earth, 
uh, without, of course, any survivors. And I remember the last part of that film because it, it always kind of resonated with me. Uh, whenever I had a time where something didn't work out exactly and we were going to go to the next phase of trying to make it work, and uh, the, there's a scientist and he's talking to another one and they go, well, that's it for Rocket Ship XM. He says, yes, but tomorrow we start on XM2. Okay, and I always said, that's great. I, that means persevere no matter what. Your rocket ship crashes, you build another one, you go out into space again. But anyway, that was Rocket Ship XM. Uh, Robert Lippert was the releasing company on that. I can't remember who directed it. But basically, as, as scientifically accurate films go, uh, it wasn't very good. The other film, however, that was terrific and gave you a real education about space and made you kind of feel, hey, this would be what it's like, was a film done by George Powell. Now, George Powell, prior to this, had done things called puppet tunes. Uh, these were those things where they had, like, animated puppets, you know, the, the stop-motion puppets. Uh, and um, uh, he had been doing those for a while, and then he, all of a sudden he wanted to go into making movies. So he used some of that ability he had at, uh, at, at uh, um, animating objects to making these films that he later went on to do. Uh, he went on and did uh, War of the Worlds. He did uh, uh, quite a few films. Uh, Conquest of Space was another one. Uh, pretty good stuff. But anyway, this picture was called Destination Moon. And it was the first film, really, of its sort. And this was about, I guess, 52, maybe 53. It might have been earlier, but I think I'm right on the years there. I could look it up, but to hell with it. Yeah, Puppet Masters, that's, that's the Heinlein book. Uh, Charlie Wallace had it. Starship Troopers, that was the other one. Uh, the Moon is a Harsh Mistress, well, that's one of his adult ones. Tunnel in the Sky, I don't remember that one. But Farmer in the Sky, I remember. Farmer in the Sky. Yeah, it was about a guy who was a farmer on, I think it was Mars. But anyway, but those were the kids' books. Getting back to where we are, Destination Moon was uh, a film that really just captured me. The idea that these guys were going to get in this rocket, and it took off, and it was a, a single-stage rocket. It just went up. It, typical what you thought rockets would look like in that day and age. You didn't realize that you'd have to do it in stages and so on and so forth. And uh, it, it was just an amazing film. Uh, uh, I, it, it captured my, my hopes and my dreams. And I said, I want to do that. I want to be able to get in a rocket and go to the fucking moon. And I know we're going to do it within a, the next uh, with, within my lifetime. And I think I said, I think I said the next 20 years and I was off by about five years. When I told the kids at school, oh, well, we're going to the moon. We'll be there in about uh, 15 years. They all laughed at me. They all thought I was crazy. I was nuts. But 15 years later, we, we, a man put his foot on the moon. And we're celebrating that anniversary now um, many, many years later, uh, and uh, we're, we're celebrating the, uh, uh, the landing on the moon by Neil Armstrong. Uh, and and uh, it, it, it was, it was a, 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 a seminal moment in our lives. You know, when it happened, everybody was glued to TV sets, uh, and it happened on uh, July 20th, 1969, and everybody was glued to television sets, watching the same very blurry pictures coming in from, from the moon, but we went, that's the moon, that's the moon, and everybody's going, wow, you know, it's amazing, it is the moon, yes, uh, oh, the farmer on Jupiter's moon Ganymede in Farmer in the Sky, thank you, Charlie, uh, Charlie remembers it better than I do, anyway, uh, and everybody was just, you know, stuck to their TV sets watching this, uh, this moon landing. Uh, and, of course, you know, taking a deep breath. And then also after they landed and everybody went, oh, boy, they're safe. They landed. 
then you start thinking about how are they going to get out of there. Um, and you find out just how close that all was. That they had he uh, Armstrong when he pulled into the moon decided he didn't want to land in one particular place because he figured it was too rocky and then he saw he had 15 seconds of fuel left of, of the fuel reserved for landing on the planet on, Mar um, on the moon so he put her down and had 15 seconds worth of fuel left there was more fuel to get back up and uh, you know uh, off the moon but they didn't know they didn't know if that if that those rockets would fire and get them off the moon and they have a shot in the film in which the, it's the daily news and and the daily news you know they mock up their pages ahead of time and they put them in uh in those days they used to press them into a form or whatever and the headline which they had as an alternative headline they had one that went you know man leaves moon you know the other said maroon, big black letters. Well, luckily, never had to use that. Nixon was told by, I'm trying to remember who, somebody said to him, it might have been one of the other astronauts who was with him at the time, said, do you have a speech ready in case they die? And <laughs> Nixon said no. And he said, well, you better. Uh, and uh, there were obituaries ready to roll for these guys, you know. Um, but they landed on the moon. They spent, I think it was maybe a day and a half there uh, while um, uh, the other guy, what was his name? Um, uh, my mind's a blank on this. Uh, was in the capsule circling the moon. And... Um, they had. Uh, they then took off, and you know everybody holding their breath. What's going to happen? And then, by the way, they had a camera on a on a tripod that was on the moon that they were shooting their stuff with when they were there. And when they went back in to take off, they pointed it at the uh, ship, and you can then see the actual lunar module taking off from the moon. Now, because the, the gravity of the moon is one-sixth of what it is here on Earth, the escape velocity didn't have to be as great. The amount of power needed to do it didn't have to be as great. And uh, they got, they, it, it fired, and they went, and they pulled into the, uh, the orbiting uh, module, and uh, the rest is history. They came back to Earth, and life was great. But this documentary called Chasing the Moon just is, I mean, I watched all three episodes in one day. It was six hours. And one, I started with number three because that's all I could find initially. And then I saw the other two were available. So I, you know, I watched the first two. But if you watch just the third one, it's all about going to the moon and them getting to the moon and uh, all of that. And that in and of itself is, is a capsule of the whole thing, uh, is pretty much all you need to watch but if you really want a great treat you watch the whole three and in it you see certain things that they you know there's a lot of footage that I don't think I don't know if it was previously available or just has never been correlated uh, or collated in one in one place and it's some really terrific stuff um, uh, and uh, one of the things I didn't know, you remember, you remember Gus Grissom and I can't remember, was it Roger Chaffee? I can't remember who, who the other two guys were, that uh, were in the capsule and then it caught fire and they died. They perished in the fire in the, uh, in the uh, Apollo capsule that they. It was just on. It was on the ground. It wasn't in space or anything. And all three of them died. And um, uh, Ed White. Yeah, Ed White was one of them, I believe. And they, they showed the wives all comforting the other wives. Uh, they were kind of like a frater uh, sorority in a way in that they, they watched out for each other and they were there for each other. And it was really quite terrific uh, what they did. And um, 
uh, the one thing that they mentioned that I, I didn't know this is that I think it was Ed White's wife, or it might have been Anders. No, it might have been Anders' wife. Yeah. Uh, it was Anders, White, and Grissom. Uh, Anders' wife was so distraught about the whole thing, she couldn't get past it, she committed suicide. Now, I, I never knew that, and I, they never made a big deal about it, certainly, uh, at the time. Um, but, I mean, it just this whole thing is so rich with facts and stories. The best one, is I think it was Borman, uh, Frank Borman, is it, um, who was, uh, there, were, there were three astronauts who, before the moon landing, circled the moon, went out to the moon, circled it a couple of times, and then came back, okay? Uh, and, and Borman talked about the fact that they had this thing that looked a lot like a top hat. Uh, and uh, what it was is it was to be used to shit in. <laughs> yeah, I know you always wondered about that. What do they do for a bathroom up there? Well, what they did was they had this thing that looked like a, a top hat, and then you would simply, I guess, sit on it and shit, and then I don't know what you did with the shit once it was in there. I think maybe there was a bag or something in there, and then you, you, know, and, and then you stowed your shit. Uh, also, at the beginning of that flight, uh, I can't remember which guy. Maybe it was why. I don't know. Um, I'm trying to remember who the, uh, oh, here we got. Uh, Chaffee was the third, but I can't remember his first name. Um, yeah, he was the third guy up there in space. But he, but while, when they were taking off, or after they just took off, got violently ill and threw up and shit his pants. And they said that took some very interesting cleaning up in the cabin because all this shit and puke was floating around. But the best thing was Borman who said that because he, didn't, he refused to shit in this top hat that he didn't shit for the whole trip back and forth. Okay? Which had to be about six days maybe I, if I remember correctly, it was like about two and a half up, two and a half back, maybe a day circling, right? So it was like uh, seven days that he didn't take a shit. He said, the first thing I did when we landed is I said, somebody get me to a bathroom. He said, and they wanted to do interviews and everything. He said, I had to go shit. You know, I had to go take a dump. He said, I perhaps hold the record for the longest time uh, for the longest uh, amount of miles not taking a dump, he said it was three quarters of a million miles that I didn't shit for three quarters of a million miles. So anyway, little things like that. It, it's a wonderful, wonderful documentary. And congratulations to PBS for doing it. It's on their, their um, uh, American Experience uh, thing. And it's just great, it's just great, just terrific. Anyway, you know, I will remember my whole moon stuff and so on. Anyway, where are we? Okay, let me turn on the phones here. Uh, and then of course I'll have to go through the whole process of, uh, of then giving everybody a, uh, a place in line or place on our picture uh, as you look over, you see. It's all blank over there, but it won't be in a few minutes. So as soon as somebody calls, we'll start put up and putting them on. Oh, God, my, my, uh, <clears throat> my chest is hurting tonight again. I think it's from sitting wrong. But anyway, I'm, you know, ah, and my back is itching and nobody's calling. Well, anyway, I'll see you again. That, that's it for tonight. Uh, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll call it quits now. Uh, because nobody's calling, and I guess that's the way it should be, because I haven't been around for three days. So uh, let me uh, let me let me grab my theme here. Let me see here. Where is it? Oh, I oh over here. Okay, there we go. Um, I'm gonna hold on a second, folks. Uh, yeah, nobody's calling. Okay, all right. Well, yeah. hold on. Anyway, that's it for tonight, folks. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, 
Uh, this is what happens when I don't do a show for three days. Oh, wait a minute. Vernon Dunn is calling. Okay, well, I can't hang up now because Vernon Dunn is calling. There's Vernon. Uh, let me see here. Are you there, Vernon? Okay, let me just take, take you... Um, uh, and put you up. Oh, you're already up there because you were, uh, I think, in that place before. So there we go. And here comes Charlie Wallace. Uh, I think Charlie will probably uh, have a place here because I have no idea, but I think uh, he was in like a third place. I don't know. Where was Charlie? Well, I'll, I'll take Charlie and put him in here. Uh, well, there, there's Scott Boddicker. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Everybody, stop. Uh, stop it a second. I gotta. I gotta get everybody here. Scott uh, Boddicker uh, will go there. Okay. Let me see here. Uh, do we have that, Scott? Scott, are you there? Scott Boddicker. Huh. Oh, I see. He's not. He's not really not online. So I'll put Ch Vernon. No, Vernon's already in there. Uh, uh, Charlie Wallace. There we go. Okay. Charlie, are you there? Yeah, okay. And Patrick, Patrick, um, can you guys hear me? I'm not, oh, I see. I, 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 you know, a couple of days off, and I don't, I can't remember where I'm supposed to be. Uh, let me see here. Uh, uh, here, wait a minute. Okay, Jeff Stein. Um, boy, this gets confusing. Let me see here. First of all, Darth Pat. Okay. There is uh, Patrick, okay, and then we go over to the, uh, I got to go over to the uh, six here, so let me get number four would be Jeff, we'll put Jeff in there, okay, Jeff Stein, there we go, okay, there he is, okay, and uh, as you can see, folks, look at them, there they are, they're all there, okay, that's so far, all right, hello everybody, how are you this evening? Hi. Yeah. Hi. Good. Uh, any of you have any feelings about the moon at all? I mean, or or should I just not even wax poetic about it? Uh -oh. Wait a minute, Michael. You got to turn off your audio of the yeah uh, citizen panel. Are you gonna screw well, us? I was a NASA junkie. You were, you were a NASA junkie. Yeah. Yeah. I was too. Uh, let me see here. Uh, there we go. There we go, Michael. Let me see here. Do we, we, uh, Michael? You need to turn your camera on, Michael. I do. Yeah, your camera isn't on. Fucking <laughs> Skype. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I know what I need to do. Hold on. You know what uh, you need to do? Okay. I'm going. Th I'm going through uh, Wirecast, so I gotta. No. I gotta turn on. Yeah. There. Trying to get too fancy with us, huh? Mm -hmm. Well, I I was desperate because you were you were ending the show, and it's like, oh shit, I got to turn everything on. Oh well, you got me yet or no? Huh? Yeah, I got you. you. Got we got you. We got you. Yes, you got you yes, Jeff. How are you? What? Yeah. So, uh, as far as the moon and stuff, uh, Pam's my wife. Her dad bought the first TV that they ever owned just to see the moon. Just to that, see the moon. That was it. Wow. Well, actually, he got a TV set kind of, he kind of got a TV set late at their house. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He, was yeah one but, of the, he was one of the holdouts, huh? Yeah, but he was uh, involved in, in working on it. Oh, really? How, did, how was he involved? More than sure. telemetry. He worked on telemetry. Okay, well that's very important. Yeah. You know. yeah. Um they have a they have a woman on this show who worked in you know the um uh what do we call it? The main control room, whatever. Uh mission, the, uh, oh. uh, mission control. And uh she was responsible for getting them back, literally, using a lot of that telemetry and everything. And uh she was hot she was good looking so they promoted her all over the place like a smart sexy woman right and uh, she didn't mind being portrayed that way because as she put it it was uh you know it, i want it was enc an encouragement to young girls that uh 
you know, they could wind up doing the same thing. So um, uh, that that was uh, pretty good, you know. Uh, and if you see her in it, you'll get a chance to see an absolutely sexy-looking woman. So anyway. Hello, Phil. How are you? Hey, I'm fine. Uh, yeah. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. Uh, good. Outside of the fact that my chest is hurting. Yeah, it's payback. No, I think it's, I think it's I think it's uh, it's uh, uh, what, what do you call it? Uh, uh, Lead poisoning? No, no. <laughs> I can't even remember words anymore. Why did I even come back for another day? I can't even remember. Vagina. Words. And no, this, no, I don't have a vagina. Uh, <laughs> no, it is an angina. He did. It isn't an angina. I've had my I had my heart just checked two weeks ago. Yeah. You know. Uh, with so uh, I fell asleep for the last uh, 10 or 12 minutes of your uh, monologue. Why did you fall asleep, Phil? Uh, I was sitting in the chair. The air conditioner was on. Uh, the uh, you know chair is comfortable. It's an easy chair. Feet go up. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, so I don't know. Are you dying or what, what? what's going on? None of your business. All right. Okay. So, yeah. I all right. So anyway, uh, where are we? So you so I didn't bore you with the moon story. It just was good for dozing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Patrick. Well, it looks like Charlie's had his hand up longer than I have. Oh, really? I can't. You know, I can't see because you got this fucking Skype that you only can put so many people on the main screen. So if you don't mm -hmm. have like Charlie on the main screen, I can't see him putting his hand up. So let me move him into the main screen here. I, I, you know, and if I, if I'm looking at the, um, at the what goes out over the air, it's a whole different story. So you know, uh, it's smaller, and so sometimes I don't see it. But anyway, okay, let's go to Charlie first. Yes, Charlie. I just wanted to show you my shirt. When I was a kid, Pluto was a planet. Very nice, <laughs> and it should be. There are some people who argue that it it. It should have planet status. Yes, yeah. uh, Patrick. Um, I've always been interested in sci-fi mm -hmm. and books like C.S. Lewis, the uh, Space Trilogy, H.G. Mm -hmm. Wells, uh, First Men in the Moon, um, Time Machine, that that sort of thing. So um, anything dealing with NASA, if there's a uh, the show on, I'll be watching it. And now that you mentioned this, I will be searching for this. It is It is just, it's really terrific. It's really you, terrific. You, you said when you were a kid there were no astronauts. Didn't you have Flash Gordon and all of that stuff? Those weren't astronauts. Those were fictional characters. Fictional characters. Well, uh, going to the moon was fictional at that point. Well, I mean, we, he didn't even go to he didn't go to he didn't go to the moon. No, he had the backpack and no, you know, no, that was jet around. That, that was Buck Rogers. Oh, yeah. Well, Flash Gordon oh. went to Mongo. Oh, planet Mongo. Yeah, where Ming the Merciless was the ruler. Hmm, sounds like Gabby. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't get that joke, but we'll just. Oh, Ming the Merciless. <laughs> I still don't get the joke. All right. Well, that's because you're a Democrat. You, you have no sense of humor. <laughs> I see. <laughs> Boy, this air conditioning is not putting out tonight. Wow. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I used to be like that with my girlfriends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, uh, uh, yeah, so, I mean, I, uh, uh, you know, I loved all that stuff when I was growing up. And I, w and I was way ahead of my, the curve because in those days, what did kids care about? You know, cowboys and Indians, you know. Yeah. Uh, that was the basic fare. And, yeah, you had your Flash Gordon, but that was a flash in the pan. And Buck Rogers, both played by Buster Crabb. Um, yeah. um, I think Buck Rogers was on Mars, if I'm not mistaken. But the uh, bad guy in that one was Killer Kane. See, I don't remember uh, the, the, much of the plots. Well, uh, the plots... I was born in 54, and... <coughs> you know, uh, a lot of that stuff. Yeah, well, that, in most of those serials, nothing happened except at the beginning and the end of the episode. In between, it was all filler. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, Patrick. Um, I just looked up the word astronaut, mm -hmm. and 
appeared that it wasn't until 1959. That the that, term that the term came into fashion. And it, right, and and the thing is, they had a debate within uh, NASA as to whether or not they should use cosmonaut or astronaut Ooh. because astro um, indicated to the stars, mm -hmm. but yeah. they eventually settled on, and obviously the Russian used cosmonaut. So well, well cosmonaut. Uh, probably, uh, you know, uh, cosmonaut probably would settle, you know, be uh, an important designation for that. But cosmonaut, the Russians were using, and we were so Russian hating at the time that, uh, let me see here. Oh, there he is. Okay. Hey, my brother from another mother. <laughs> what? <laughs> what do you mean, your brother from another? Would you turn your? Would you? I, I, you will not be allowed on this program <laughs> until you put your your uh, phone in uh, in landscape mode, Dan. Okay, is this better? Yeah, that's much better. There we go. Okay, I haven't used. You know, I, I remember you guys were talking about this uh, new Skype is like the most horrible thing that's ever happened. So, you know, I'm just trying it now, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it's, not, so. it's not wonderful, you know. It's not wonderful. Alex, he has the same last name. What? He's got the same last name as me. Yeah. So that's why he's a brother from another mother. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> it takes, uh, yeah, but Alex doesn't get this stuff, you know. It's getting I'm, slower and slower. I, I, I'm getting very slow. Yeah. yeah, I'm getting very slow. Yeah. So you had a pop problem with that? Yeah, look at us. We're walking. Look at us. We're talking. Well, you know, I took uh, I took a couple of days off, and that was enough to make me just get used to not doing it. You know. Yeah. So like yeah, we missed you, Alex. Huh? huh? We missed you. Uh, uh, well, I guess. Thank you. I appreciate it. I mean, what it. Did. Yeah, I appreciate I, it. I was actually. Uh, gonna call in on uh, Wednesday night. I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call. I'm gonna call. I've been thinking about it for a while, and then uh, I couldn't. Yeah, he couldn't so. because I wasn't here. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, here I am. Well, you know, I was almost gonna take tonight off too, but you know, I uh, because I, I didn't, I've been, I've been getting up awfully early lately, like, uh, like uh, getting along on five hours sleep, and so that makes me punchy. And I've got this thing with my upper upper chest here. Make maybe just from sitting wrong. It could also be that the coffee is irritating my esophagus. Uh, these are things that I guess happen as you get older. So anyway, um, so uh, let me see here. What 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 else is new? So we got we got the space thing. I, I'm glad you're all excited about the fact but here's the thing and i was going to mention this in my in my monologue that bothered me is that everybody was i said oh i started saying it and i didn't continue the thought i was excited about the fact that you know everybody was involved in watching this thing felt a very communal spirit on in the whole world the, the world had done something you know it wasn't it wasn't just america it wasn't just um Although the you know the the race with the Russians is what propelled us to do what we did, uh, but I mean, uh, and I thought that this would be the beginning of space travel. And even Werner von Braun, in the documentary, says, "Well, now that we've done this, we can be to Mars in the next twenty years." And um, um, that didn't do it, you know. Uh, it, it somehow, after we got to the moon. The honeymoon was over. I mean, they just, uh, that was it. Um, so uh, uh, I, we never went back. And that really was shitty. I mean, we should have gone back. Uh, I'll tell you something, Michael. I love the pictures, but they're kind of distracting. Okay, I just wanted, to, when you were done, I was going to tell you about this new thing they built at the Rose Bowl. That's pretty awesome. That it's they built. A, a, well, what, tell us about it. Uh, uh, they, uh, they're going to cut to it. So they built this big tent that has this full immersive experience and they recreate the whole countdown. Wait a minute. Hold on and a second. Let me, uh, let me put that the, the, picture up the there. Vi the video is coming up. Yeah. Can you hear it? Yeah. Yep. 
Wait till you see they they show you the inside of this. There. What is this? It's a, this is at the Rose Bowl right now. Oh, really? So they have like a cast of people pretending to be, you know, the flight director and that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's very nice. That's kind of cool. It's kind of like a planetarium on steroids. Right. Yeah. They, they literally just yeah. built it for just the uh, 50th anniversary. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Okay, that's enough of that. We're fine. All right. That's cool. Oh, that's cool. Um, uh, anyway, um, uh, hello, Tony. Show us more of your face. Take that camera and kind of move. Center your face. Oh, there we go. Okay. I mean, if, I you get, break if, you, if, you, if you did those braces and you straighten those teeth, damn it, you should get your money's worth and show it to everybody. You know? Uh, $300 and that's it. Hmm? I owe $300 and that's it on the braces. Oh, really? Yeah, that's it. I got to go over there and make a little payment. So. Yeah, but then it's another 1000 for them to take them off. He still wanted to, you know, remember I told you he wanted to do like that one to the three, whatever, to straighten. I'm not doing anything else. Fuck that. Yeah, yeah. So, it, the cap so it's been that sometime. long now? How many years has it been? Uh, I had it in one three years. Now I'm just having like retainers. Yeah. I took an extra year and a half to and get it And they look better. pretty straight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, he's oh. Take, taking that out of shows. Yeah. Look at that. He used to look, wow. he looked like snaggle teeth. It, it was horrible. Yeah. Yes. I was like Jabba Joyce. Yeah. Yes, Patrick. <laughs> Patrick. Oh, uh, I didn't want to tell Tony... Not only are we happy for your teeth, but the more we see of you, the less we see of that fucking shit behind you. <laughs> oh, I cleaned the drapes last week. Patrick, I cleaned these. I had this was a bitch to put back on the hooks. I had to tape the edges. I cleaned the drapes last Saturday. Did that's you really? Oh, that's wonderful. I swear to God, I did. I'm surprised they didn't dissolve. Did Alex? And you know, we're going to put it on hooks i had to have my sister help me oh okay all right the trick is to put a piece of tape on the edge of the hook and it just slides right in oh really yeah it was it was kind of easy really really but it was you need two people though mm -hmm. and look uh, mike has his uh, his dog here's penny there. Oh. who has been bugging me to yeah. come up yeah she's beautiful she's a gorgeous yeah. dog. is that a oh, bastard wow. it's an english finger spaniel yeah, let me see here. Let me let me show everybody. Uh, uh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. I thought if I talk, it would switch to it. No. There we go. Yeah, yeah. It switched to it, and we're there. Yes. Penny. There we go. Oh, look at him, Penny. Oh, why do we talk, why do we talk that way? Dogs must I listen to that you. Dogs must hear. Dogs must hear you. Dogs must hear you do. Dogs must hear you do that and just go fuck you. Imagine dogs start talking. That'd be funny. Holy moly, the dogs talking English. <laughs> Imagine a dog can really talk. That'd be like mind blowing. Yeah. Birds talk. Why not? You never know. Right, right, right. So anyway, um, so uh, let me see here. I'm, I'm trying to think. Is there anything that's been happening in the news? Well, uh, we had what's his name resign today. Oh yeah. Yeah. Alex Acosta. Yeah, Alex Acosta. Uh, quit. He, had, he had he had to fall on the sword because the longer he's there, the closer it'll get to Trump. So. Yeah. Yeah, it'll get as close to Trump anyway, but with him gone, it might distract a little bit. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, he, uh, you know, t Trump could use that distraction because now with these vice raids, uh, yeah, this thing is. Oh my god, that's a big story here in L.A. Uh, does this guy wake up in the morning and say, "How cruel can I be today?" You know. Yes, Patrick. They're all playing to the base. They, we were lucky here in Milwaukee today. Mm -hmm. Because we had Donald Trump and my girl, Marianne Williamson. She was doing a town hall somewhere in Milwaukee. And if if I had any motivation to go see her, I would have went. Because just to listen to her idiotic bullshit flying out of her mouth would have been worth, I don't know, five bucks or, to donate to her campaign. <laughs> Uh, yeah, 
Oh yeah, you got to keep her in the race as long as possible. Sure, She's gonna win with love. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Embrace oh. love. <laughs> and we had Williamson here, and I thought there couldn't be two people that are further apart, not only ideologically but just on a human being scale. You know, one is, is all love, and the other one is not all. Love. Well, who was the other one? Trump. Oh, Trump! Have, oh, Trump came to your town. Trump was here all day today. Oh, really? He, oh, he, shit. He had, he had some speech he was given at a uh, aerospace thing, and then uh, there was a uh, private um, donation party, whatever, and something else. And then Williamson was here for a town hall. And yesterday we had uh, Warren uh, Castillo. Um, I think Beto was here, and uh, yeah. uh, maybe Kamala Harris, I don't know. And then, uh, so that was yesterday, they had a big town hall, which I don't understand what the fuck that was about, but my girl was here today. So. Well, I mean, it's, uh, Trump's already running for president again, you know. It's a little early, but he's running for president again. He's never stopped. By the way, uh, yeah. Phil tonight missed his scuba uh, what was it? Your scuba photo, your underwater photo club, which I thought maybe it's a photo club. They all meet underwater, you know. Uh, no, no. This uh, they have a lecture and then they have uh, uh, a competition. It's once a month, and uh, uh, so I figured uh, I didn't know if you'd need support or whatever. So I, I, I'm here, rather than taking. Well, the that's day very off. nice of you, Phil, and I appreciate it. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I was really upset that Trump uh, was saying that AOC was lying about what she saw and what she heard at the border. Was. Did you see her in front of the fence? In the, you see her in the white outfit with the red lipstick in front of the uh, chain link fence? She can't fence help looking good and having fashion sense, Phil. Uh, There's no, it was a parking lot, empty parking lot in the Bronx, and it was a photo op. She was uh, acting... Um, uh, horrified. What is what does this have to do with what she saw at the border and Trump denying it? It was a lie that she did. and she also said that they were drinking from toilets. Well, wait a minute. The hold, toilets hold, hold. are one piece to where you got the toilet and you got the sink above it, just like in most uh, detention facilities. Uh, and so she says they're drinking from toilets. She well, you know, okay. So what were they doing? Drinking from the sink? Yes. Well, no, they, they had this. They had uh, uh, things that they could use to drink from the sink. They didn't have to stick their head on, on a faucet or there's something. There's 35 but, men in one cage, and there's not enough room for them to even lie down on the concrete? Uh, I don't think that's the case, but that's, oh, that's oh, okay. the fault of the Congress. Know. Oh, that's uh, the fault of the Congress, yeah. But blame yes. it on the Congress. You know, you could also blame and it it's on the fault the, of AOC. Matter of fact, your AOC is now pulling the race card. Race card. You know, now she's going after Pelosi. You guys are beginning to eat your own. Well, Pelosi needs to wish. You I love it. I'm okay with her going after Pelosi because I'm tired yeah, of her. So you're yeah. saying she's yeah, eating Pelosi? Pelosi she's, uh, you know, we're moving, we're moving leftward. Yeah, she says to, that Pelosi's not a racist, but uh, she's singling out all the women and, and, uh, of color uh, to, uh, uh, and uh, giving them busy work. So that they'd shut their mouths. Does this bother you, Phil? No, I love it. <laughs> you know, I'm just going to sit back and enjoy it. You know, I mean, the only the only thing you haven't they, they haven't done yet is light themselves on fire. You know, uh, I read an article that the the DNC convention next year is is in what, what city was it? But there's Moscow. Oh, huh? No, no. But there was 50,000 attendees and only 12,000 rooms in this city. Uh, it's going to be like a detention facility. Yes, uh, uh, Patrick. <laughs> That's good. What? That's good yeah. This is what they were drinking out of. It's a combination that they have in all in, uh, jail that mm -hmm. have. Detention facilities. So you've got the toilet and it sink together. There's oh, two steps in the water line. So you can get potable water out of the sink and you can shit in, in the toilet. 
And the other thing is, the yes. Democratic Convention is coming to Milwaukee. Well, how do people know? How do people know that they're supposed to shit on the bottom part of it and and <laughs> wash their hands in the upper part of it? Because I remember once in grade school, in grade school, uh, they they came up with a new idea, and it was this big round thing, and they had pedals on the bottom. When you push the pedals, water sprinkled out of them. That's for washing. Well, your wait hands. a minute. Wait a minute. We didn't know what it was for. Nobody told us what it was for. Some, some people were washing their hands in it, and other people were pissing in it. <laughs> you know. You ever have to piss, and somebody else is using the toilet? You know, sink is, uh, you know, it's it's fair. And game. do we know that those are the it's specific toilets the that they were using when they say they had were drinking out of the toilets? Oh, that's the toilets that they no, use in no, the pension do, facilities. Do, do, really? it, 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 yeah. do we know that that was the case where they said that certain people were having to drink out of the toilet? Yes, that I believe is the case. <laughs> Phil. That's exactly it, what they had. So. I mean, look, you know, I mean, all I'll say is uh, <laughs> Trump is just very cruel. You know, oh. he's very cruel. Identity politics. What do you mean I didn't? What do you mean? What now? Was that a new term? He's cruel. He's xenophobic. Is that the newest term? Is that the newest still word released? He's anti-Hispanic. It's all true. Yeah, he is. Oh, he's definitely he's uh, uh, anti-immigrant. He's very much anti. He keeps marrying them. Well, yeah, he married an illegal. He doesn't mind. Well, no, but in his mind, it's okay to fuck them. You know, because you're violating them, but it's not okay. I guess he's a good politician, you know, uh, because, you know, that's the way they think. It's no, okay it's to fuck a, him. He's not a great politician. Terrible no, he, politician. You feel like he's fucking everybody. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes, Patrick. Um, I, I would like everybody to have the opportunity to bitch about Milwaukee and the Democrat mayor and the Democrat governor who lobbied for this uh, Democratic convention to come here that have an adequate base. Go ahead, everybody bitch, because I, I thought it was an asinine idea. Patrick? I mean, enough room, and you're going to have 50,000 people, so... They're going to let them stay in the sports stadium like they did in uh, New Orleans during the hurricane. Oh, that was a travesty. They were killing people in there, remember? Yeah. Weren't they raping people and mugging them? Come on, somebody now That's Queens. Democrats. Well, that's probably right about it. Well, you know, this is not. This has nothing to do with being democratic. It has nothing to do with being a Republican. It has to do with being a human being who cares about other human beings and doesn't like to see them suffer or see them be separated from their from the parents. Good. Being, and let them not try to. Well, enter the no, country the, the bullshit, Phil. Bullshit. That yeah. once they get here. They become a kind of we become They're, responsible for them, and we should we should not treat them in a way in which it, it just absolutely goes against. I mean, in any uh, this president actually should be brought before the Hague for this uh, kind okay. of behavior. You got an extra bedroom, you know, just uh, stand aside. Yeah, they're not coming in illegally; they're seeking asylum. Yeah, it's not illegal. Oh yeah. Wait a minute, no. What, yeah, wait, asylum card. Hey, hey Phil, legal. Phil, that's legal. That's legal. legal. They let them seek yeah, asylum legal. in the next country, which is Mexico. Well, why not city? here? Why not here? We got a lot of room. Yes, Patrick. All I, all I will say to what your statement was with the Hague yeah. is I would have no problem with that. But here's the thing. Obviously, the rest of the world does not feel what's happening here is that bad. Otherwise, there would be other countries that would be calling for some sort of United Nations intervention. Well, there's no, there absolutely isn't any United Nations intervention in this thing. And there should be. Because right. it's not like it's all. You can't, if you want that, it must not be bad enough because I don't hear on the news from any country anywhere saying that what the United States is doing is horrible. If it was, then you would have at least, let's say, Mexico, or you would have one of the uh, South American countries or Central American countries saying, you know, they're treating people terribly. 
or you would hear people in Britain or in the Netherlands. I mean, give it a break because... Patrick, the United Nations is too busy condemning Israel. Yeah, well, Phil, but uh, on, uh, on a serious note... That's, I am serious. I, on a serious note, if the United Nations felt it was bad, something would be said, or other countries would be saying something. So I don't hear shit. So if they do, I would have no problem with, you know, if, if that's what they want to do. But obviously it's not that horrible. That's a great point. I wonder why they haven't said anything. Maybe they said it and we're just not reporting it. Oh, sure. No, they're well, just happy that the United States has this thorn in its side that it has to deal with, kind of like what they do with the Palestinians and the Israelis. No, they it's just the, sit back, uh, give them well, bombs I, instead of food. I think a lot of they these countries like our money. That's why. I mean, I think a lot still of, hold on a second. Go uh, Phil, uh, Jeff has his hand up. Yes, Jeff. Uh, Alex, you listen to BBC. Mm -hmm. What kind of response do you get there? It's pretty much reporting it, it like it's reported here. That you know these are bad conditions for these people, and uh, they're not being they're being treated inhumanely. Now, it seems to be the general uh, way in which the BBC reports it, but it's hard to tell because that BBC feed is aimed at the United States. And so it's going to take a story like that and, and blow it up more than say, I mean, if we were sitting in England, the question is how big would that story be, all right? I'm sure every night on, B on BBC in, in England, the first story is Brexit. You know, I mean, it's just it's mm -hmm. because all news is uh, all news local. is is proximity. You know, yeah. yeah. Some people said local. Local, I, uh, local, local is not the local. word. Proximity. Yeah. Yes. And if if um, the news item doesn't have proximity, then people don't really care. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I'm I I think probably this story. Is uh, is a bigger story the closer you get to it, you know? You I'm see sure Dan's got his hand up if yeah. he's in a circle. Uh, yeah, for you. yes, yes, uh, uh, Dan. Dan. Yeah. Well, what I what I was gonna mention was that, uh, you know, I mean, obviously there's lots of horrible things that go on in the world that uh, the UN neither doesn't know about. Or, you know, of course, probably the UN probably has to have a certain amount, there's a certain uh, criteria that they're not just going to intervene. But, uh, you know, I'm sure there's people talking about it, and I know there's uh, protests all over the world about it. So They're not protesting in Hong Kong. I mean, the Hong Kong protesters, the UN well, isn't they, saying they have something closer to home to protest about there. So What do you mean? Oh, that, that well, they have uh, you know two million people in the street. Uh, well, it's uh, they're it's China. Yeah. Uh, some uh, I'm I don't know the whole story, but some about extradition of yeah. um, prisoners. Mm -hmm. You don't say anything about the about. million, two million Muslims they got in detention camps uh, trying to relearn and become. Well, how about the ones know? the Israelis have in detention camps? Yeah, they're called prisoners. No, they're not. Yeah, they're terrorists and prisoners. No, they're that have not been terrorists. They're not terrorists and prisoners. Phil. The, peop the people. They're actually. The people there are. They China have documented over Muslims the years. They have documented jailed. over the years they're, in Israel concentration camps for Palestinians and people of that sort. Don't change. A, it's not a what about. It, it, the no, it's not a what I'm about. about what I'm saying is are only they're only being jailed because of their religion. What? And what? The, the the two million Muslims in China, I call, I call them Uyghurs, Uyghurs. Uh, wait, 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 Uyghurs. Hold on a second. The demonstrations where? Well, there's dem there's two. They're not demonstrating. These people are being held in concentration camps. Uh, they're called. It's a group called the Uyghurs, and I think there's either a million or two million now. They're saying. Yeah, that's the uh, group in uh, Western China, I think. Right. Mm -hmm. And so they're they're being forced to uh, give up their religion. <laughs> And relearn and accept uh, the, the Chinese communism, uh, and they're being held in camps. Now, the UN isn't saying anything about these guys either. The UN hasn't been saying much about anything. Nope. You know, that's, which that's means, sad. yeah, it's not doing yeah, its job. I mean, hey, listen, we haven't heard a word from Vernon. Hi, Vernon. 
<laughs> he just I'm waved just it all in. He's just taking it all in. Anytime you want to jump in, you know, you're you're welcome to. He looks yeah, relaxed. I'm using a new tablet here. Yeah, I'm using a new tablet down in the family room. So. Oh, I see. Okay, looks looks great. You know, is it a big one? Is it the big uh, tablet or is it just regular? Uh, it? It's a Samsung 10 inch. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. They all work now. Uh, Apple, I've you got know. YouTube up on the big 47-inch screen across the room there, so I can see the the feed that's uh, pulling out on YouTube oh, at see. the same time with the sound turned down. Well, if everybody waves at him, he'll see it in about another 30 seconds. You know. Yeah. <laughs> I got that. That's the same setup I've gone over in my PC. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, we got a lot of people. We've actually hit an all-time high for people watching at one time tonight. Maybe I should yeah. only do this once a week. You know, you've been saying that. Yeah, I mean, there is huge anticipation tonight. We just we just hit like 44 watching at one time. You know, mm. that's getting pretty high. Mm. But one um, more, and you can celebrate Trump, uh, the Trump level. Uh, the, the Trump what? Uh, I guess well, you got 44 is Obama, 45 is Trump. How, how long yeah, is all the waves? Not, how long have I not been on the show? It's been like a while, right? It's been a, a long years. time. Yeah. You got a full house. Bill hasn't changed one yeah, wait, wait, Hold on a second. I got to, uh, let me see here. That's, uh, who did I just add? I, I just added. Just throw that. Up, 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 got to get Kevin in here. Uh, yeah, I got to get uh, Kevin. Needs a different well, screen. I, oh, Mr. Yeah. Dan, Mike. Hog Rider. There he is. There's so many names now. Screw up. Uh, so, no, no, there's no, so no. many names that house. I've had to. That I had to, oops, there we go. I, I really wanted it to do this so it would fade over and be nice and not as jarring. Uh, and uh, uh, this is, uh, let me see here. I got to do one other thing here. Uh, let me see here. What's that shirt say, Kevin? Hmm? What's, What's that? your shirt say, Kevin? Fuck ALS. Oh, that's cool. Oh. Okay, and uh, let's see here. It's a full house, right? Is that right, Phil? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep. There we go. And it's yeah. a full house. Yep. All right. Nice. Okay. So there we go. Yeah, Everybody, isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Yeah. I don't see it yet Better. because of the delay. Yeah, of course. But, uh, you'll all see it in about another 30 seconds or something like that. Anyway, um, I just, uh, you know, it, and then these ice raids this weekend, you know, it's just, it's just a, a more humane way to handle all of this. And far be it. Get a refrigerator. Far, far, what? No, don't have an ice raid. Just get a refrigerator. It's all a big jam. It's all a big distraction. Uh, like joke out of it. Does Phil understand that Democrats want all of the illegal aliens who committed crimes out of the country? No. They they want porous borders. They I they want they them don't. to come in. Do they want them in an instant. Uh, pass that's a lie, Phil. That's a lie. Voting. That's absolute lie, Phil. Oh yeah. That's a, no, that's that's you've been watching. That's not ba based you on. You've been results. watching too much Newsmax. You're listening to too much uh, Sean Hannity. Yeah. No. Mm. No, I don't. As Maybe a, a, you're not a, listening to enough. As a Democrat, uh, you know, I don't want porous borders, but I want reasonable borders, and I and I want a. A uh, somewhat welcoming atmosphere once they get here that we're not going to make what is a terrible uh, 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 plight for them even worse by by adding to it. You know. Yes, uh, 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 my, Dan. It's been so long, Dan. Uh, the separating of the families is just punitive and being cruel for cruelty's sake. And. Mm -hmm. you, there's no, I mean, there's no reason to do that. I mean, I remember that uh, George Takei, you know, he was in a Japanese, you know, Japanese American internment camp in World War II. You know, he said at least he was with his family. He wouldn't know what he'd do without that. Yeah. Well, he also brought up another point. He said, these are concentration camps. And, and And, and uh, the person who was interviewing him said, well, you know, as a Jew, I kind of feel you're... You're, you're using that term, but that was the term we used for the camps in, in Germany. And he said, and then he very wisely said, no, those were not concentration camps. Those were those death were camps. Those were death, death camps. camps. Yeah. Uh, the, and their main reason for existence was extermination. Uh, these are concentration camps. 
And he said, what I was in as a Japanese person was a concentration camp. Right. I agree with that. Yeah. What happened to the Japanese, uh, other than the death part, um, uh, was uh, very similar to what happened to the Jews uh, and, and gypsies and others. And what's in, happening uh, to the Mexicans now? No. Uh, because they're, they're being separated uh, because their parents are being detained. Now, uh, with uh, the separations not taking place anymore, uh, they stopped the family separations. People well, because uh, they didn't uh, have a plan on how they could get them back together once they were when they resolved the problem. And they're still well, separated. Didn't right. they put uh, I, the bracelets on them? You know, a home, no, home, you know no, those home no bracelets, bracelets. Oh, on their ankles, the ankle bracelets. To uh, to keep track of them? No, I don't. I don't know about nope. that. I think that's what they were doing. Yeah. And if you take them off, it's hard to keep they, track of them. They took them off when they deported them, so they don't have them on anymore. So they have no idea where they are. Well, they only loaned it to them. <laughs> it's hard to know joke. your name even if you're three months old. <laughs> yeah. 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 But you know, they know there's a signal that comes out of those things. Oh, yeah, they're really high-tech. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, hey, uh, uh, your friend, uh, what's his name, Epstein's well, going to be wearing no, no, one. They're, they're, he, they're, he was going to work. Well, How is that possible? Yeah, yeah, they're, they're, but there's an obsessiveness oh. that Trump has with this whole thing. Like, he wants to accomplish this because he said, that's what I'm going to do. And I'm gonna, they, nobody can stop me. I mean, the whole thing about having uh, a thing on the census, about saying you were... Uh, an immigrant or alien or whatever, are you, not a citizen. citizen. Are you not a citizen? citizen? You're not a citizen. Not a citizen. He, he couldn't get it. He couldn't get it through the courts. The courts told him he was full of shit. I think the Supreme Court said, uh, no, you can't put that on the, on the census. And yet he was, in the last for the last week, he's been saying, I'm going to do it anyway. Yeah. He's doing an executive order to do a survey. You to can't see, do uh, you can't do an executive sir, order to undo well, that's what a he said court he's do. to undo a court he order, Phil. He decided not to, Phil. Oh. He has no concept so of what his limitations it. are as president. You know. He has no understanding of the constitution, period. He doesn't yeah. have to because everybody just lets him get away with whatever the fuck he wants to do. Thank oh. you, Nancy Pelosi. At least he tries. Yes. What do you mean he tries? He tries. <laughs> yeah. You know, every, you know every, everything. He's got a position. He, he's trying to do what he said he was going to do. And, well, by the uh, way, did you get the, the, did you get the, did you get the thing, Phil? It. Did you get the thing, Phil, I sent you that Verin sent me about yeah. about the Justice yeah, that had, Department? That had nothing to do yes, with it Acosta. Did. Y yes, it did. Absolutely. He doesn't give a fuck about checks no, and balances. No, because he said that Acosta did a great job at getting the job oh, numbers up. And the fact else. is, he didn't have anything to do with it. That is not the function of, of excuse me, the Department of Labor. And I said you're splitting hairs and you No, I'm not splitting hairs. No. Did you he, see the, uh, did the, you see the description? The needs to know how the government works, just a theory. <laughs> yeah. He really doesn't know how the government works. I'm surprised that... Uh, you know, I'm surprised we're still in in some kind of shape because he doesn't have enough people in, in oh. appointed places to handle the the government. He's a very lazy president who I imagine doesn't do much every day. He just has he doesn't people care about who, governing. Yeah. He's all over the place. No, he doesn't care about yes, politics. He was in Milwaukee today. Yes, what was he doing in Milwaukee? He was uh, visiting his constituents. He was campaigning, Campaign. Phil. Campaign. What do you think most oh, politicians do from the moment they well, get elected? Well, you say he wasn't there campaigning, Patrick? There was, there was no, there was no rally. He did have, there was a private party for him. Oh, well. Right, which could be considered campaigning, but there was no rally here. There was a, a private party at a house, and uh, he visited a business, and that was, the extent of it. So there was no yeah. rally at Miller Park or any bullshit like that. What happens? What ha Who pays the bill for Air Force One on these things that are obviously political junk? It's so glad you do. We do. We do. We yeah. all do. But I understood yeah. that, for instance, when Obama was running for president, the Democratic Party paid for Air Force One whenever it went somewhere for political purposes. They did? Yeah. Yeah, they did. Mm hmm. 
Trump doesn't believe in that, though. Well, he no. believes in getting I everything for free. I don't free. know that uh, that that's not true, no. or it is true. He believes I, yeah. in getting everything for free well, he because don't. he can't afford anything. Okay. Mm. Well, he he was going to borrow it from Epstein, but he had to put up his seventy-seven million dollar mansion yeah. as collateral. Mm. Hey, you know, I think with not to change the subject, but. With Epstein, I think there's a lot of uh, political figures that are going to uh, get exposed, <laughs> uh, yeah. you know, uh, once uh, he goes to trial. I think that's why there was a sweetheart deal in the first place is because yeah. there were too many too many bigwigs that are uh, that are going to go down for this. Bill, let it all you. hang out. You know, let funny. it all hang out. Yeah. Let it let the air yeah. cleanse. Yeah. Bill's hoping yeah. Bill Clinton's in that list. Uh, no, nah, I'm, I'm not, but I know he is. <laughs> well, I mean, it, 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 a guy like um, uh, Epstein, he was, he, was a, he, was, he was a big political contributor. He liked that world. And so, I mean, the fact that he may have given Democratic. some people money in their, for their campaigns and things like that doesn't mean that they're child predators, okay? It just means they, they thought this guy was very on the up and up and probably would not take the, his money today. Okay. Did, did you see the woman that is uh, accusing Alan Dershowitz of uh, yeah, raping Dershowitz. her yeah. uh, on the on uh, Epstein's island? And uh, Dershowitz is saying this is absolutely not true, and he, she well, also was, implicated well, why, why was, Al and why, Tipper Gore. Why? What? She implicated Al and Tipper Gore as uh, being on the island uh, Al, when she was well, and got raped. This sounds and, like a really bad CBS series. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, it's funny. Uh, a, a, a reality show called like what we call Rape Island. Rape Island. <laughs> <laughs> they fly him in. Uh, Alex, you, you know fly in, but you don't fly out. That's you it. Fly, right. And it's no tattoo waving to you goodbye. Yeah, and yeah, they I'm come on vacation and they leave on probation. Yeah, very good, very good. <laughs> that was Sonny Bono uh, when he was the mayor of uh, Palm Springs. He, he uh, that's what he would say Palm during Palm. spring break. We come here on vacation and we leave on probation. And leave on probation. <laughs> you know what's funny mm. is that Michael Vick went to jail for mm -hmm. the dogs, and this Dershowitz. Anybody else would would have went. Der, anybody else who got linked with Dershowitz would have been in the slammer. Dershowitz didn't do anything wrong. He was the attorney that represented I mean, Epstein. Anybody else who wasn't, if he wasn't a billionaire, he'd be in jail already. By the way, I don't put down anybody, including Dershowitz, who I'm not a big fan of. Uh, who who would defend um, him? Uh, I think it's perfectly reasonable. You know? Gets a defense. Well, I mean, yeah. because it, it, you need a defense. Everybody needs a defense, and right. and they need the best defense they can get. And whoever works for him, I mean, what a, a good defense attorney would do with this guy is say, well, look, well, let's find out where you're innocent and where you're guilty. I'm not going to go in and plead you're innocent for something that you say you're guilty of. OK, so don't tell me anything that you don't want me to know. But if you tell me that you did this, I will do everything I can to get you the least possible sentence. Yeah. Yes. Can Patrick. you imagine what you would tell the guy? Yeah. Do you think a lawyer would just walk out and say, I can't take this guy's case, but he's probably going to pay him a lot of money? I wonder if you just walk away from it. No, you like, don't I walk away from yes. it because everybody needs a defense. OK, um, Patrick. Yeah. And. Uh, I remember the other night, everybody was quibbling about what uh, he was called, and I believe the final term that would be that was decided on was just sexual predator, and then he had to register. I think it was sexual predator. I think that what he said was he was a he was called a sexual predator, but he wasn't called a sexual something, which was far worse. Sexual predator. <laughs> I was talking about uh, PC 290, uh, which is Megan's law, and he had to register as a sex offender. You know, I'm so that's fucking sick called. of hearing about Megan. Fuck her. Well, that's the whole idea. <laughs> this Epstein sounds like a creep. What? Oh, Epstein. Epstein, well, look, no, now, Tony. He's again, Alex's neighbor. Again, yes, uh, again, Tony. Uh, well, he's Tony's here. neighbor, too. Uh, oh, really? Uh, Tony, I mentioned this the other night. Maybe you didn't hear it. But really, you can only call him a creep for the thing he pleaded guilty to back in, what, 2004? When was it? 2005? Four or five, yeah. yeah. Uh, 
But uh, so far as this situation is concerned, you got to wait for him to have his day in court before you make any assumptions about guilt or innocence. Because you weren't there, you didn't see it, yeah. you don't know, you know. I, and his presumption, the presumption of innocence, is something I think that's probably one of the major f forces in our constitution, you know. That we but do you think like people like Trump and Epstein, they have so much money that they think they're just untouchable? Like I can buy my way out of anything. Well, I think Trump thinks yeah. that. I think he get his wrong impression about what being president is, is that you can sim simply sign some piece of paper and it becomes law. You know, that, that's not so. I don't know who is, who is uh, uh, you know, giving him advice. But they're giving him bad advice. I mean, besides Stephen Miller? He talks to him. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, I mean, it, it's just... Sean Hannity? Huh? Sean, Sean Hannity. Sean Hannity? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, Dan, the man's up. <laughs> yeah, the legal... The, oh, yes, Dan. Oh, well, the thing I was uh, going to bring up was, like, supposedly Trump is a masterful uh, as far as like he knows his audience he knows exactly how to play them and everything mm -hmm. but then the guy can't even dress himself yeah he's a pig of a dress yeah, he can know? see the shirt well, uh, did play. you see that joke of an outfit he was wearing in England I think oh, somebody, oh, you mean, I think his handler yeah, did that crazy colors. somebody oh, said God. let's let's oh, give him God. the most fucked up tie and tails you've ever seen yeah, with his belly the hanging over the edge of it, you know, that was that's what that one was all about you know, I think like, the rental, sure, the rental this is really how it works right, this is absolutely you know, the, the Tux rental place fucked them and, and switched switch Tuxes on them Does any they seem didn't have his size bad? well nobody has his size oh, pretty huge <laughs> You know, so. the elastic pants now that just keep giving it. What did you say, Tony? Tony? He froze. Just oh, keep giving it. Every time he's eating out, he's getting bigger. He's getting bigger by the day. Oh, yeah. He's a fat pig. Jer Jeremy Kramer used to have a line. He says, uh, my size is portly cadet. Yeah. I mean, I'm not making fun of <laughs> I like that. I don't, Port yeah. I mean, he looks, he looks like since he's got, he looks like he's aging something horrible. Well, it's like a Maybe Larry something years old. A Larry Bubbles, a Larry Bubbles Brown line about you know what's he cutting his coke with? Butter. <laughs> <laughs> Butter. <laughs> hey, you know your friend Bob Rubin on the twenty fourth is going to be at uh, one of the last shows. I guess they're having at the Punchline. I don't think they're closing the Punchline down. Really? They, they saved it. The latest word I got is that they're not going to. Because the city said they can't zone it for like a gymnasium, which is what Google wanted to turn it into. Mm. And so they're oh, thinking yeah. of just letting they them. Did, they did argue that. I didn't know what where it was Supposedly at. Supposedly they are. They have uh, come to an accord, I think, to keep it open for a while to, to renew the lease for a while. Hmm. Oh, yeah. very nice. Yeah. Yeah, they had some big comedians come out and uh, argue that for them too. I think Dave Chappelle was one of them. Yeah, Dave Chappelle was one of the, one of the leaders of it. Yeah, the Punchline, in case people don't know, is a club in San Francisco. The, the premier comedy club in San Francisco for ever since was I it got owned there. by Live Nation or one of those. Well, eventually yeah. owned by Live Nation. It was started by uh, Bill Graham. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and um, you know, but uh, anyway. Um, what? Somebody sleep? Somebody sleep? <laughs> that's Penny. Oh, that's your <laughs> that's your dog. Oh, that was the dog. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, look at him. He's got a studio that's as big as mine. Look at this. Show yeah. show him your studio there. That's awesome. This is my edit bay, Alex. I'm an editor, so this is uh, my my 4K edit bay. Your 4K edit bay? Yeah. Doo da doo da. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so up there is the YouTube stream, and then that's Skype, and this is uh, Wirecast, and that's mm -hmm. the web over there. Mm, okay. All right. What kind of stuff do you edit? Uh, I'm freelance. I actually worked at Entertainment Tonight this week, so. Oh. oh. Usually freelance means you're unemployed. Usually. <laughs> Usually. And I'm grateful that uh, I, got, I got some great clients. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. 
and that's that's the iPhone. And what and what are you, what are you using as your main machine there? Is that uh, it's a MacBook Pro 2017. 2017. What do you mean the uh, the trash can? No, no, it's, oh. a, it's a MacBook. Oh, a but, MacBook. Uh, oh, a MacBook. I don't, I don't know if you can see behind here, Alex. Uh, I know you're really geeky. That black box there, mm -hmm. that is, uh, there's a separate graphics card there that's driving the 4K monitors. Oh, okay. All right. That's connected via Thunderbolt. Yeah. So yeah. it kind of has like some external power. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, anyway. So, um, um, Oh, here, Ray Renati is calling. Oh, boy, watch watch what's going to hey, happen. Hey, you got, uh, what do they call it? Uh, yeah, but I'm, house, I'm worried but, uh, about I'm worried. Royal, a royal flush. I'm worried about royal this because I'm afraid we're going to, like, lose. Hey, uh, is Ray in his new car? Hey, wait, hey. Wait a minute. Hold on a second, Ray. Let me find you here among all these people. Um, it's the damn Mike Hogwriter. Oh, there he is. Okay. All There's right. Phil taking up my whole screen. Oh, okay. There's hey. everyone. Hey. Uh, are, are you there? Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Is he, that, is this looks like daytime over there. Where are you? It's uh, California. There hey, we you go. Mark, you marked yourself uh, safe in the Ridgemont earthquake. Were you in Southern California? No, just that somebody was at, people were asking me. Oh. So I got tired of that, people asking me. <laughs> uh, okay. Alex, I got video <laughs> if you want to see it of uh, the earthquake here. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Uh, first of all, I got to go from what we now have up here, right, um, to something oh, else. To a royal flush. Here we go, folks. Here we go. Here we go. It is now a royal flush. Okay. Woo! And and so far, all the uh, all the all the lines are working. So remember the other day when this yeah, happened, awesome. we ran into trouble. Yeah. Anyway. Well, I'm driving, uh, Alex, so I'll I, probably fade out eventually here. Yeah. <laughs> Alex, I got video of the earthquake in my office if you want to see it. Uh, video of the earthquake in your office. Well, he has to start talking so I can then go to him. Uh, hold on a second. First of all, there we go. Okay. Are you, are you running it? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Dan, you got some noise in there. D Dan. Oh, is there noise? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so oh, we... I'm sorry. I was near my air conditioner. Yeah. I apologize. Okay. Start talking. See, when he talk, when, uh, when we hear Mike talk, uh, Mike, start talking. Yes. I'm going to start talking, and I can play the video. It's not that exciting, but it's kind of cool. Okay. Uh... This was well, now, now. There's some noise coming. See, we can't. We can't Fasting. keep it on. Hello, can you hear me? We can, oh. we, yeah, we can't keep it on though because for some reason Dan is making some kind of noise that's making it. Oh, the he him. may have. Oh, I moved away from the air conditioner now. All right, well, I, I have my mic on now. Would you? We, I, Dan's we, uh, okay. Skype okay. is probably oh, set to oh, automatic oh, oh, uh, oh. microphone. Yeah. You know, yeah. and he has to unclick that. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, uh, oh, okay. Wait. There's Phil. Now talk to us, Mike. Okay. Um, wait. Can you hear me? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see if that'll play now. So. You were just sitting there. Yeah. And then if you look at my wine glass. Mm-hmm. Where's your wine glass? I don't see it. Next to his keyboard. Right by the keyboard. Yeah. And. And also, if you look at the cabinet, the big cabinet behind me, you see it shaking. Mm-hmm. I don't. And, and it's get, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Was anything, see the little does anything point. fall out of there? No, no, it wasn't. I mean, well, it's like I'm not watching anything. Was that the seven point one or the six? This was the seven something? one. Yeah. That was. It looks like it was can, a one point two. Eventually, you're going to see my whole chair shake, and uh, I don't know if I can. A Alex, what me? size did you get in the marina? Well, that was um, it was a six nine and that was upgraded to a seven one. All right, now you can see me going. Okay. See the whole chair rocking and the wine glass going and Penny freaking out. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see if there's anything going on though. Uh, well, well, no, the, the wine glass and his. I can only camera. tell by the reflection. Oh. Yeah. 
Yeah. The door is moving. My desk. <laughs> The door is moving. The wine glass was moving. Uh, he had a monitor that, uh, that was going back and forth. Mm -hmm. it, yeah, it was it, subtle. It, it was. Uh, I, I've been in scarier ones. That's for sure. The one that was down here that was a six eight uh, was bigger. But uh, so you were in the marina during the Loma Prieta? Yeah, Alex? yeah, yeah. Wow. You must have had a lot of damage. I was uh, at the ballpark. I, I didn't have a lot of death. So was everybody else, Phil. No, everybody I was. ever talked was, to says, I was at the ballpark. Uh, yeah, I was. I, you know, uh, yeah. I was, I was at work. I thought I was going to die. But you see, you I were at the ballpark. The scariest I've ever been. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was coming out of the stadium hey, pub bullshit. on my way to the bullshit. seat. Bullshit. I don't care whether you were at the, at the baseball <laughs> game. It doesn't really matter. I was in the marina where the buildings were falling down. Liquefaction. Okay. You know, yeah. I, you know, I, 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 I saw a destruction in a matter of minutes of an entire neighborhood. Yeah. You know. I was standing on the San Andreas Fault, I, and, and it split right below my legs, and I had to do the splits. Wow. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Well, Rip you would have pants? had to be out. You would have had to be out near. Um, uh, uh, I was the, wearing stretchy pants. Well, you'd you'd have to be out near. Um, Santa Cruz. Well, no, 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 no. Well, oh. also it goes all the way up into Marin County. Uh, in there's Tamar yeah. to, uh, to, to, Tamales yeah, Bay. San Andreas. I, I know, but I think I think crack. You're breaking up on us. Wasn't there a farm uh, on the 06 quake where they had a big uh, uh, gully that opened up uh, in Marin? Or, or I think Fishers, it was Marin. They or call them Fishers. Fishers? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Popeil Pocket. Uh, po uh, what is it? Point Reyes Station. I mean, no, it wasn't Point Reyes Station. There's a, there's a small little town. Inverness? No, no. It's, it's just the crossroads. You come down through Marin, then you go oh, right. Oh, Occidental? No, it's, it, I can't remember the name now. But anyway, we don't want to spend the whole time trying to figure out the name of it. But that's right where the uh, epicenter of the 1906 earthquake was. Mm -hmm. you know. Here's, here's uh, a photo of the uh, San Andreas Fault. So you can see it goes all the way up to Cape Mendocino. Yeah, mm -hmm. It goes right through Hollister. Yeah. But this one... About eight blocks away, or about a half a mile from here. But I don't think this one was San Andreas, was it? No, I'm no, this sure. is Loma Prieta. Do you know Although what the... It looks like the Loma Prieta here is uh, on the San Andreas. I'm looking at this photo here. Yeah. Now, it, that... it, it, do you know what the biggest fault in the United States is? No. And that's a Donald big one. Donald Trump? Yeah. Yeah. He's Does not my fault. New York? What? Does it go through New York, Washington, no. D.C., that area? No, it's out in the Midwest, New Madrid. Oh, oh that's right, yeah. Right. right. Supposedly yes. huge. And we do have a fault going right through Central Park here in New York. Did they have an earthquake today in Washington or Oregon? Uh, I think they had one today, a big one. They've uh, been having them up at uh, Mount Hood. Yeah. And no hoodies. Yeah. Well, you know, okay. Cal well it, 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 I'm sure Trump will come up with something like, "Well, it's 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 the fault of uh, you could prevent those earthquakes." Yeah, they need they need to uh, scrape the snow. Y yeah, <laughs> it's the Democrats <laughs> or, or rake those trees. It's the godless. I, I love Democrats. it when Trump tries to be scientific. They need to, they need to move the rocks to the other side <laughs> to balance the mountain. It's all their fault. Yeah, they should be doing this. If you hadn't let the rocks accumulate over hundreds of years, and if you had picked them up, like I've been saying my whole life, then you wouldn't have had that. Then earth. the mountain wouldn't tilt that way, well, and everything would be fine. Probably some about coal <laughs> or something like that. Yeah, and the worst thing you could say about uh, what's what was his name? The, uh, the 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 guy they just indicted. Uh, uh, Epstein. 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 Was, I wasn't a fan. What? <laughs> I wasn't a fan. Is is that is that is Nancy that your take on the whole guess. thing? Did you get, he said words against Nancy Pelosi. Hey, for a guy that's lived in New York for as long as you have, you you really don't get New York speak, you know? <laughs> no, I don't. Yeah. What's a fan? 
a fanatic. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, he was friends with Epstein. Now, all of a sudden, as soon as the... Hey, he knew the guy. Yeah. You know, he's he at his parties. Didn't they say he was at the party? Well, I mean, listen, you got to realize that Epstein was a guy who who held parties and uh, went to parties and uh, was part of the social scene down in uh, down in Florida and the social scene here in New York. You know, uh, uh, as I said the other night, though, the thing that doesn't make sense to me is here's this guy who gets busted down in Florida has to go for 13 months uh, 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 to jail, even though he gets out for 12 hours a day to go to work. Uh, oh, and and when he goes, a hard-working guy. And when he goes back to the, pris- to the jail, it's like a really, working. really plush jail, okay? But anyway, yeah. but still, nevertheless, he, his, liber- his liberty was, uh, what can we call it? Um, encumbered? Encumbered. You would have thought that he would have been a little cooler about well, his if they would have put Tony's curtains in that jail. He wouldn't want to stay there. <laughs> yeah. Imagine if I was his caretaker it working there. I throw stuff out. Yeah, that's torture. I can't cook for this guy anymore. I quit. Did you How notice that Dan's not smoking? Dan, Dan is a heavy smoker. What? I haven't seen him smoke. Did you quit smoking, Dan? Yeah, I, I quit smoking. Wow. Wow. I quit smoking tobacco, that is. I should clarify. But, uh, <laughs> You're doing the uh, but, but we got it's Ray is vaping. Thing I've ever done. Yeah. yeah. Ray, do you vape? He's doing it now. I, I drape. Ray, talk to us. Uh, he froze a little. Uh-oh. I've, I've vaped for a while, but... Uh, I don't like doing that either. I just gave up. Tobacco free, nicotine free. Nicotine free. Good for you. Yep. Now he was a heavy smoker. How'd you do it? Uh, the patch. No, this really? is weed. Yeah. The patch uh, worked for me. It doesn't uh, work for a lot of people, but it did it for me. And I was ready to quit. You know, you got to be ready to quit. Wait a minute. Is that Ray? Is that weed you got in that yeah. vape? Yeah. Yes, it's weed. Yes. Oh. It's weed. Well, that's definitely yeah, safer for you than tobacco. Yeah. Well, it's mostly I CBD. It's four, four parts CBD, right. one part I, THC. So I didn't get high yeah. on it. But it I thought it was. I, th- I thought they were daisies. Phil, man. Yeah. <laughs> Phil, you can arrest him right now. Put a citizen's arrest. Uh, it's legal in this state. You can drive and smoke pot? No, I guess you can't. No, it's CBD. So that sounds wrong. <laughs> CBD hey, I, I got I got CBD cream that I use on my hands and feet. I bet you do. Yeah, I, I did. Don't masturbate with. Yeah, it, it comes from Denver. <laughs> it's great for jacking off CBD cream. <laughs> yeah, now I now I got the image of Phil jacking off on my head. I... Hey, you know this this cream is the CBD is like the fifteenth ingredient. And yeah. and the first ingredient is like peppermint oil and some other crap. Yeah, I I tried some of that too, but uh, I think I I, I CBD Vaseline worked work just as good. Oh, but I think a lot of those products are scams. Yeah. Well, now here's my Rolfo recommended. Here's a piece of news that came through today. Um, Facebook has been leveled with a five billion dollar fine. From the federal parking government. Ticket. Huh? Just a parking ticket to them. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Well, they're worth $585 billion, Excuse me, $580 billion now. Uh, yeah. You know. But they never hit that. You would have thought they were one of the ones that would get close to a trillion, but they didn't. Yeah. You know. What did they get fined for? Uh, abuse of uh, privacy. Really? Privacy Good. Abuse. So who gets the money? Uh-huh. Um, you know what happens when they're going to use it to build the wall? Why? Why must we spend good money on the wall? The wall is not going to solve. The wall isn't going to solve your problem, Bill. Yeah. The, the wall is not going to solve that problem. You put gates in, and then when the Mexicans come through, you charge them. This way, they pay for the wall. They have ports of entry for that. <laughs> Turnstiles like the subway. Yeah, good walls make good neighbors. 
Not really. Not really. What, oh, you know, geez, and, and, and here, here's what I'm worried about with any wall, Phil. Walls keep people out, but they also keep people from getting out. Yeah, that works. Well, suppose I want to leave, and they'd say, that wall is there, and don't you go across it. Yeah, they'll fly you out. First class. <laughs> no. I don't think so, Phil. But you, you know what I'm saying. I mean, yeah, I, you know. Like walls. the Berlin Wall and so forth. Exactly. I remember uh, when the Berlin Wall, when people tried to jump the over it from buildings. Yeah, they, they, they try to jump from buildings that were, you know, near the wall. They, they ran to the wall and got shot. And, uh, like the drill put up. You know, but that was the communists. Nobody wanted to stay there. Yeah. Like the drill. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so uh, is, what else? Is, is there anything else in the news? Well, uh, uh, Ross Perot passed away. Yes, of course. Oh. We lost Ross Perot. Uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah Here's the deal. Tom, Tom Yamaguchi come in and tell us about who died. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, we lost a couple of people, didn't we, in the last kind couple of days? He away from Trump a little bit, didn't he? We, lost, we also lost uh, a Rip Torn. Oh, Rip Torn. Yeah. Rip Torn, yeah. Oh, he so on Hollywood ah. Squares? He was on Hollywood Squares, right? No. Yeah, I, I didn't know that. He wasn't on Hollywood Squares. Rip Torn wasn't on Hollywood Squares. That was no. Paul Lynn. Yeah. Paul Lynn? Uh, You're thinking of Rip Taylor. Of Rip, Rip Taylor, Taylor. that's Rip it. Taylor. Yeah, there's a big Rip difference Taylor? between Rip, Rip Torn Taylor. and Rip Taylor. <laughs> yeah. Is Rip Taylor still alive? It's a... I don't yeah. know if Rip Taylor is still alive. Who had I Madam? The, the that was Waylon Flowers. He's 84 years old. He's still alive. Wow. Yeah, oh, by the way, I, live that long. I was Sherry Lewis. I was talking Sherry about the Lewis. I was talking about the space race, and I was watching was watching this documentary, Chasing the Moon, uh, and um, I every time they would come up with something, I would know the name of the person. Like for instance, who was the first Russian in space? Uh, very good. Very good. Very very good. Now, now, who was the first woman in space? Ellen. Sally Ride. No, that Mary uh, McAuliffe. It was a Russian woman. Yep, you're kind, you, you, you kind of were close there for a second, Charlie. Zelenica, mm. who's the no, pop off? No, no. Okay. Valentina Tereshkova. Ah. ah. She now, played tennis? who was the first <laughs> dog in space? She's hot. Who was the first dog in space? Spot. Rover three. <laughs> see, extra, extra. Number uh, uh, the first dog in space was Laika. Yeah. Uh, oh, and, oh, that and, was a Russian dog. And the Russians went, oh, we sent a dog into space. The thing they didn't tell you uh, is that the dog, dog died. The dog died. The and dog I think died. they, I, I think when they got to Earth. They switched dogs so they could show this dog getting out of there. Yeah. But the dog... Oh, no. <laughs> they forgot to load some... They forgot to load dog food on the rocket. Yeah, so, no. I, I, what, the, what are we going to feed Supposedly, dog the dog died of a heart attack. He was so yeah. terrorized yeah. by you? the whole... Yes. Oh, you know. yeah. And then we sent a chimp up. Oh, yeah. And that Bo was... Bo what, Bo was Bo what was the chimp's name? I'm trying to remember the Bo chimp's Bo. name. No. No. Uh, Bonzo, bedtime no, for Bonzo. No, 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 no. <laughs> Ronald Reagan Jr. Oh, come on. I'm trying to remember what the name of the... Uh, but anyway, we sent up a we sent up a chimp. Ham. They sent up a dog. We sent up a chimp. The chimp's name was Ham. 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 You're absolutely right. Ham. Thank Is you. that one the pig? Yeah. So. That's not a chimp name. Ham. Kosher. Yeah. 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 So, he learned Morse code and talked back to... Uh, <laughs> Central in Morse code. Yeah. So I mean, I remember. I, rem I, I remember Vernon. All these names. Now, why do I remember those names? Why can I? To, I was just sitting there. They were saying, "Oh, the first guy in space." I go, "Oh, where's Yuri Gagarin?" Oh, uh, first woman in space, uh, Valentina Tereshkova. Um, you know, I for some reason these names stayed with me all my life. You know, they just didn't disappear. So. Well, it's a. It's a very, it was a very fascinating time and an amazing endeavor that uh, 
It's just vanished. Yeah. Oh, by the way, mm -hmm. if everybody will be quiet a second and we can let Mike talk, we will see a picture. We will see a picture of Ham. Hold on a second. Is, is that wait, work? It was not coming through. Got teeth like Tony. For some reason, the picture isn't changing now. Um, uh, uh, I see you. Mute your camera. Uh, mute your mic for a second, uh, Dan. Uh, I think maybe there's some kind of noise coming from your NASA. Head. Oh, I think I know. Is it, is it there? Is it not there now? Well, okay. Now, just be quiet. <laughs> is it gone no, now? No, no. Don't say anything. Um, uh, it's not. It's not going to his picture at all. How many times am I going to make this chimp noise? Oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> that's ham. Are you sure that's ham, or isn't that? Is that like a a mocked up picture. This is from Discovery TV, so yeah. Jeez. And uh, there was another shot I found here. There he is. Oh, there. Now that one looks real. That looks like they put him in there. And I, um, I wonder if he like shit his pants. Well, he shit. They shit his pants anyway. So you know, it doesn't is matter. They, they put pants on it. Diapers. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So. Yeah, otherwise, wow. you'd have shit weightless in space. Well, yeah, you know, uh, just, just well like no, I told I told the story floor, about how uh, the, uh, one of the guys, uh, Chaffee, I think, when they were going around the moon, when he th they took off, he puked and shit his pants, and then that stuff was all floating around the cabin, and they said, oh, was, Jesus, he said yeah, after he said he, he, I think it was Borman who said people don't realize how filthy those cabins get. In just yeah. a single flight. Whoever, you he know, said, and after Neil Armstrong and all that is the heroes, but that reveals the those they are the real heroes well, for dealing oh, with Oh that. well, they, he said that you after a while you just put up with it. There was shit on everything. There was peace. Isn't on shit in everything. space the name of Trump's space program? I guess. Yeah. yeah. There's yeah. a lot of shit in space. But you know, I think it's just a shame that we've never gone back there. I think if we go back, it's not going to be NASA that does it. Doesn't Trump want to go back? Isn't he talking about <laughs> be uh, Elon going Musk? Back to the moon? And he'll be charging. Musk, yeah, I think. I think. Yeah. I think Musk Mars. Right, is almost close to where he could. Today, we could because we have the technology, could very easily go to the moon and land on it and do stuff there. You know. Yeah. But it's just the, expensive the, as hell. Maybe not as expensive as it used to be. You know, Probably not. Probably you not. know, they got coupons. Yeah, but I mean, I think that, uh, for instance, they they kept talking in this documentary about how all the electronics in the capsule that went to the moon had less computing power than your iPhone. A lot less. A lot less. Yeah, it was like uh, what seven million times less. Yeah. Yeah, that's I mean, great. That's think, why you had all those pinheads with slide rules. I think a lot of it, a lot of it was probably, if I'm not mistaken, a lot of it was um, uh, uh, um, uh, analog, and, and none of it was really digital. But today, yeah, they were talking today, to the coder yeah, the other yeah. day. Uh, yeah. What the hell was her name? Uh, uh, JoJo. Uh, what was her name? She yeah, was they on, used punch cards. She was on the documentary, and she's very yeah, yeah. attractive. Yeah, And they showed the, the, the stack of code that, that was like six feet, six and a half feet tall. Yes, yes, <clears throat> yeah. But did they show her today, or did they show her back then? Both. Oh, because she was hot back then. Yeah, and then they showed her today, and she looks like she was in the Manson family. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. Rode hard and put away wet. Well, yeah. you know, you know what I've always liked about not being, what I would call good looking, is that, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, beauty gets ugly. Okay. Yeah. With time, gets ugly. But ugly stays that way. <laughs> and so you're kind of used to it. You just kind of get up to a plateau where, hey, I'm now she's as ugly as I am. You know, I I, as I as I said once, I said, you know, when I was a young when I was a young kid, I always wished that someday I could look like Marlon Brando, and now I do. Hey, you know, <laughs> when I was in school, some of some of the girls when I was in high school, you, you look at them and you say, I, I would never, you know, uh, and and then you see their picture, uh, you know, 50 years later, and some of them look pretty damn good. 
Yeah, uh, compared to reverse, to, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, they started exactly. working out and stuff, you know. Uh, Some of these girls are all chunky and fat when they were young. They get they get older. They're working out You're like, whoa, hot mama. Yeah. That's what I say in my head. Hot mama. Yeah. Well, they weren't going on dates, so they made a lot of money and they got plastic yeah. surgery. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Put the zits off. Uh, but uh, you know, I mean, uh, I, I I just think that what we did back then was an amazing feat. I mean, the fact that. Kennedy said, 10 years from today, we're going to put a man on the moon. And 10 years from then, we did put a man on the moon. And it only showed what we can do here in America if we put our mind to it. That nothing yeah, is impossible. No kidding. That nothing is impossible. And and, yeah. and important things like that. You know, I think that Who was... was president the at the time that uh, they landed Nixon. on the moon? Was it Nixon? Nixon, Nixon. Yeah. Yeah. Nixon. Nixon. But he was very careful not to take credit for it. He, right. he simply congratulated everybody, but he didn't do anything to kind of take credit for it, which I, uh, they, everybody said was a really nice thing of him to do because, really, yeah. it, was, it was Kennedy's inspiration. And there was a point at which, by the way, that Kennedy saw how much money was sucking out of the budget, and he was beginning mm-hmm. to realize if he should slow the project down. But he, then he got shot, and he didn't, and, and Johnson felt this is the one signature thing of his we got to keep going. And everybody kept it going in, in Kennedy's honor. And, and so we got to the moon within 10 years. And we went there for about three years, maybe four. I can't remember how many. Uh, we left a lot of Hasselblad cameras there and, uh, um, and I would imagine fecal matter. And then we came back and never went back. I mean, how stupid was that? We went to all this trouble to get there, and then we never did anything. Like, you know, We lost interest. We well, didn't want to clean up. No, I think that, I think today we have the technology that if we did it, we could do it much simpler, much easier, and we could probably set up a, a, a living quarters on 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 the moon, a base. Didn't on the, the moon. Chinese just go? Yeah. Uh, they, they oh, oh back. Uh, interesting. Right. Here's the thing they had on the documentary, that when the men went to, and landed on the moon, you know what else landed on the moon a day beforehand? Uh, no. Jeez. A Russian unmanned. Space vehicle. Ooh. It was Russian. And, and they claim they Russians claim that by the time that the Americans had landed, that it was coming back to Earth. The thing that they didn't announce that somebody else discovered through a telescope is the thing never it crashed on on <laughs> landing, and never got back. It's was up, it like a Land Rover or something? Or? It was like it was like a mock up of what the, the a lunar module would be. And, well, it's and, still there then. So. Yeah, and it, but it crashed, and was there, you know, forever. How uh, many times did we go to the moon? We went about five times, if I'm not mistaken. That sounds about right. Yeah, yeah, about yeah right. I think so. And we landed people on the moon, uh, or we just circled it. Well, no, we landed people on the we moon. He asked how many people moon. landed on the moon. Oh. Phil, you don't remember? No. You know, I, I remember, I I remember the first one. I mean, I think the goofiest oh, okay. thing is when we remember took when we took the lunar we took the lunar rover up there. We actually it, had an automobile. The moon landing was a hoax. I know that oh, they God. went they I put a rover on Mars, but I didn't remember that they'd gone back to the moon. I I knew they went yeah. once, but no, yeah, I knew we went a bunch. I knew we went a few times. I just couldn't remember how many. Yeah, because there's been there's been far several astronauts who actually walked on the moon. Oh yeah. 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 The yeah. Apollo guidance computer weighed 70 pounds and con- and held 248 words of RAM. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> 248 <laughs> words of RAM. Words. And then and that, was, that was big technology. 36,800 words of what they call ROM, which is like the ROM. ROM. Read only memory. Yeah, ROM. Yeah. Yeah. And it took, only used 55 watts of power. My first computer <laughs> uh, had a screen that only that. put 80 and it, characters. And it, yeah, but when I got to tell you, landing, this used, it this had used, an error screen. when it was landing. That's true. This uses it went into less error. And yeah. it, it, they, were, they were trying to figure out how it was going to continue to land. And yeah. it had to dump all this bad information. They weren't sure whether it was going to be able to dump all that information. Doesn't it take like four minutes from the time that they do the command to the time that it's received? Well, it depends uh, on where I, you are. When it's a Mars, ro- Mars, 
Uh, that it, takes longer. It could be. It could Mars be, be out. Twenty minutes. Huh? Yeah. How, yeah, but the Mars is how much? Uh, I think yeah. I, I thought I heard twenty minutes, and the Moon is like two and a half seconds. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Today. What? What about then? Was it? What about? It, it, it doesn't change, Phil. Well, the speed well, of light is the speed of light. Different. I think Mars does. You know, we change our orbit in respect to Mars. So yeah, uh, the orbit, the distance to Mars will change, but the distance to moon to the moon won't. Well, it does. No, the the moon, the moon is in a, uh, well, it is not in a completely circular orbit. It has a perigee right. and an apogee, uh, and uh, so right. it does vary. But what we could do in the future is we could send a laser beam to the moon, and then send all our communications on the laser beam. And it'd probably get to the Earth very fast. Ah, speed of light. Well, yeah. I, I guess so. I think there's already a laser. Beam Either that, or I hope they hope they do the something. I, I hope like they do something. Measuring it or something. I measuring hope, the distance. I hope that they do something about it, because you got all these guys at the networks, and you ever notice when they're talking to somebody in say France, and they say, "Hi, uh, Bob in France. What do you think?" And the guys. Well, I think, right, because there's a lag. Satellite. Uh, if we have to do that with the moon. Bob's on the moon right now. Bob? <laughs> Ten minutes later. <laughs> or Mars. Hey, uh, Bob's on Mars. Hi, Bob. They're going to have to come up with something different for the, for the Internet. You know, the Russians had a sub. The Russians had a sub, and they were—they think they were trying to cut the cables that went across the ocean that uh, power the internet. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess there's a, a ton of cables, and they said they were about the size of a garden hose, and that these certain Russian subs are being refitted so that they could cut those cables, and uh, they, so that they could interrupt, uh, I guess, European commerce and and things like that. I don't think we're uh, using cables under the water anymore. For yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah they are. Absolutely. Are we still yeah. using and that's it? that's what the internet they, is. They just yep. finished laying a new one between here and Japan. Yeah. They're, it's all fiber underneath the sea. It's all fiber now. Okay. Yeah. All right. I, I, but, I just thought most of it was satellite now, but I guess it's not. Yeah, no, you would think, you would think it's up in the cloud. Does my too expensive. It's going to be all yeah. underground. By the way, does my voice sound hoarse tonight at all? No. No? Oh, no? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Because it feels hoarse well, when I'm using it. it. So, of course, yeah. of course, your voice. Your well, voice, anyway, listen, course, uh, we gotta we gotta start going here. It. But before we sign off, let me just uh, say to you, that thank you so much for calling tonight. We've had an amazing amount of people listening to us this evening. Uh, so either it was more interesting than usual, or when I'm not on as often, you know, they and like you got it. Got a royal better. flush. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, the point is that uh, uh, you're probably all wondering why I wasn't here for the last couple of days, and I'm not exactly ready to talk about it, okay? But I, I do thank care. you for all your concern, uh, and it's, uh, it's something which I, I just don't know. I didn't want to talk about it because we get bogged down in discussing it, okay? Uh, that's it, yeah. Anyway, I want to thank, uh, I want to thank uh, Vernon for being with us tonight, Vernon. And when we do decide to talk about it, you're one of the guys I got to talk to. Uh, I want to thank um, Charlie, and I want to thank Patrick, and I want to thank Jeff. Let's see if I get everybody. Mike, I want to thank you. Phil Meyer, I want to thank you. Dan Meyer, I want to thank you. Call us more often, will you? Uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, 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 Tony. Uh, thank you uh, very much. Um... <laughs> oh, God, everyone's <laughs> going. <laughs> Uh, uh, Kevin, and thank you, Ray. Okay, I got them all. All right, now, fuck off. Everybody give a big <laughs> wave goodbye to the folks out there. I'll wave goodbye, too, okay? That's it. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Oh, boy, I almost thought I wasn't going to get everybody, but I, I, I managed to remember them all, so that's good. Hey, listen, uh, it's uh, Jack next with the... Uh, with the... Uh, uh, intersection uh, and then I will be back hopefully on Tuesday uh, at uh, uh, there's no uh, there's no Damien for three weeks so I'll be on first thing on Tuesday at uh, 
10 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time, if I feel like it. Uh, and I appreciate everybody checking in tonight. Uh, that's it. Um, stay tuned for Jack. He's next over most of the same station. I'm Alex Bennett, and I'll be back again, as I say, on Tuesday. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>